<laughs> we just go. Okay. We just start. Let's go. <laughs> hey everyone, what is going on? It is Brian, and I have a special guest with me tonight. It is my wife, Kristen. And we are talking about something that was mainly special to Kristen, but uh, something that I got her for Christmas, which is the Sassnack. Uh, this is a blended scotch whiskey, so I don't talk about scotches. And I don't really drink scotches. You need a little bit more either. But this is uh, has a good story for us. Um, this is from one of the guys who was on the show Outlander. Sam Hewen. Sam Hewen, who is also Scottish. Yeah. And, and worked with um, uh, another master distiller or producer from Loch Lomond. To, to come up with this brand. And I, I thought I read somewhere, somebody say something like, this isn't just one of those celebrity whiskeys because Sam has a little bit more of a hand in the process here. I don't necessarily know the validity of that. But anyway, this is a 92% blended Scotch whiskey. It is non-age stated, but I think it's anywhere from nine to 20 year old Scotches that are in here. It's a Madeira finished uh, in the end, and it's supposed to give some nice balance. So one of the things I will not be able to provide for you all is like, is this worth the money? Um, when it comes to Outlander, that's something that you've been a big <laughs> fan of. Why don't you talk about the show and about the book series? Um, well, <laughs> the uh, whole premise of the story is um, a woman from the 1940s that ends up going back in time and um, meets and falls in love with a Scottish Highlander from the 19... No, sorry, from the 1740s. It was around the 40s. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> and it's the story of their love story. And, um, and there's a book series There's first. a book series as well, and they're massive books. Um, they take a really long time to get through. I think there's nine of them now. The ninth one just came out. And your life for like the last three years has been Outlander. Not so entirely we, true. We, we've watched through Outlander in its entirety once, and then it's the second show that we've watched through its entirety twice, and it is on its way to become the first show that we've watched through its entirety three times, well, and we're almost there. I equate it to kind of how it was Harry Potter was for me when I was younger. Yeah. Like, it's just a story that I'm able to totally immerse myself into. Um, and when I go upstairs and the audiobook's on, or... <laughs> You know, you got the book and the show. Anyway, and then now we have the whiskey. So it was, it, this is something that she's wanted for a while. And, and I finally ended up getting it. And we had to order it in because it's not uh, distributed in Kentucky yet. So let's go ahead and we'll just dig into it a little bit. And I just want to hear what you think about it. This is a lot of pressure. Yeah. Uh, Kristen's more of a scotch enjoyer than I am. Again, neither of us are super versed, but we've picked up a couple. And I just thought it would be fun for us to do this specific bottle together. Again, I'm but just like talking about flavor and my vocabulary is is pretty universal to whatever it is that I'm tasting. But a couple of folks who were um, viewers or fans of the show said that we should talk about Sassanac. And so we're talking about it. Um, I feel like it's, you know me and I like Four Roses. I feel like it's got a lot of like sweet fruits and floral on the nose. It's definitely sweet. I'm definitely not as um, elaborate in my descriptions as Brian. <laughs> That's okay. So. We could go into the palate if you just want to go into the taste. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I have to be careful of, because Kristen points out all the time, is to make sure I don't <laughs> aggressively chew. So I've told myself I'm going to try not to aggressively chew while we do this video. Um, even on the nose, I feel like it smells like it's going to be pretty rich for only being... 92%. And the palette is, I don't know, a little richer than light. I agree. I feel like it's sweet. Um, kind of like a decadent. But that's kind of what I think I like about scotches is that they have that, like, sweetie... I don't know if you know that word, but like... I think I was chewing. <laughs> um, it's um, kind of like a, it's like a dessert. And yeah, I think the maltiness makes it feel big in the palate mm -hmm. and it's definitely sweet this one specifically i feel like you get kind of some peachy tones some like vanilla ice cream kind of tones like that's the kind of desserty i get i don't really get a big cakiness necessarily but 
you and I, I mean, we love eating pie. So like this definitely gives some kind of like fruit tart, fruit pie, like notes, a little bit of vanilla. I definitely still get the floral on the palate too. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, the middle of the palate, we've kind of talked about whether it's uh, it's light or it's rich. I think the richness uh, most specifically is described to me like very honey-like. It, it has a kind of thick honey, like as if you put honey in a tea or I don't know. It's got a honey-like sweetness that sits in the mid palate. And I feel like that gives a little bit of weightiness and a good sweetness that kind of plays with the floral tone as well. I also feel like I get a little bit of like brown sugar. Yeah. Again, kind of getting into that pie sort of thing. The, the finish is in, we had a flight that uh, one of the viewers sent in for me and Drew P. Whiskey to do for the live last week where we tasted through some other scotches and I'll let Kristen try them afterwards. And there were a couple of them that we tried that were more peated. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I feel like one, if it wasn't peated, it definitely had a little bit more of that kind of smokiness on the back end uh, that, that you get in some. And then one that was uh, definitely a peated whiskey. Mm -hmm. And and you enjoyed it a lot more yeah. than I did. I'm intrigued by it. it it's interesting in a very weird way uh, as we kind of work through scotches. So I figured this would be a nice, easy one to, to kind of talk about. It's it's kind of springy. I don't know. It feels very light. It feels very lively. There's some citrus. There's a little bit of pepper. And then otherwise, it's just like you said, some of that brown sugar, not quite caramel. I, brown sugar is pretty good note there. Brown sugar, some of those stone fruit notes, uh, almost like a, like a champagne-y note. I don't know if it's because of that Madeira finish, but it's a, a little bit of a, a light, sweet wine like mm -hmm. i feel highly inadequate to be doing this with you no it's okay i mean <laughs> i won't go super verbose about it it's not the most complex pour mm. i think it's just it's enjoyable decadent enjoyable light but it still has a good richness for some of the other scotches that we've had and that's about it i mean if you want us to talk about <laughs> other scotches <laughs> Let us know. This might be. I would love to talk about other scotches. A new segment. We've talked about whether or not Kristen should jump on the channel with me more. Right now, this is just a bonus episode because I imagine most people are like, why are you talking about a scotch? That doesn't help me. You never talk about scotches. So this is a ninety-nine dollar product to me. That seems like it's a little bit on the pricey side compared to some of the other enjoyable scotches out there that we've tried. Um, that other Balvenie that we got a sample of was a little more than this, but I definitely think the palette was better than this. But there's a lot of ones that we've tried on the shelf that have been in the. I don't know, 55 to $85 range that have also been enjoyable, but they all kind of taste like this type of scotch to me. So if you want something that's light and lively, that's eh, pretty good. But, you know, I think you and I both have said that this one is um, nothing super crazy before. We had that other Balvany, the, mm -hmm. the rum finished one uh, that, that Michael gave us. Yeah. And I think you, you and I both kind of yeah. prefer that one a little yeah. bit more. Than I this would one. love to try more, more scotches and more beers. Yeah. It's definitely something I'm interested in. Cool. Well, we'll keep it short and sweet. Thank you all for giving my beautiful wife some grace and her first appearance <laughs> on the show. If you all want her just to do her own channel and just nix me out of here so you stop seeing me chew, let me know. And uh, <laughs> we can get uh, an abandoned husband <laughs> channel here going on YouTube. Thanks, as always, everyone, for tuning in. If you enjoy the content, leave me a message down below. Let me know if there's any scotches that you all have been interested. If there's scotches that we should try that you think might be interested to see us uh, talk back and forth about. Or if you've tried Sassnack and what you've thought about it. Don't forget to tune in for extra content to Intro Proof Live on Drew P. Whiskey's channel. We're live on Thursday nights doing blind flights, maybe have some guests on or talking about specific topics or non-specific topics. If you're enjoying what we're putting out, if you want to support this channel or what Drew P is doing on his channel, consider supporting us on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Podcast. Until next time, everybody, we'll see you all later.